There is a common plant in Brazil that has been nicknamed the matador or murderer. It has a slender vine-like stem that creeps on the ground until it meets a strong, healthy tree. Then it sends out an entangling tentacle that cleaves and climbs up the tree. Once it is up the tree it sends out more arm-like tendrils that grow around the tree. The tendrils grow larger, and slowly choke the tree. It continues to climb until it reaches the top of the tree. Once there it shoots out a huge flowery head. Out of the flowery head, it scatters its seeds. So in the forest of Brazil, there is always an ongoing battle between the matador and the other trees, a battle for survival and propagation. C.S. Lewis once said, there is no neutral ground in the universe, every inch to, every split second, is claimed by God and counterclaimed by Satan. At any point in time you are either in fellowship or out of fellowship. You are either in the battle, or out of the battle. You are either with the cause of Christ or an enemy of the cause of Christ. Before I continue, I have a favor to ask of you. If you have not already subscribed, please support our work by doing so, and share the video with family and friends. Thank you. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. 2 Timothy 2.4 The Webster Dictionary defines entangle as to be interwoven, wrapped or twisted together in such a manner as to not be easily extricated or freed. You can picture a bird caught in a net. The more it tries to free itself the more it becomes caught in the net or a fish caught at the end of a fishing line. In much the same way we can also be caught in some little sin so that it is difficult to escape. Solomon warns that a person's own sin can ensnare him. In Proverbs 5.22 he says, The iniquities of the wicked ensnare him, and he is held fast in the cords of his sin. Are you caught up in some little sin, that you need to free yourself from? Someone has said, people don't fall into sin, they drift into it. When you find that your free time, is filled up with harmless, enjoyable diversions, take care. They can become like baits that slowly draw you in. And before you know it, you are caught up in the hook. There is an old hit song by Hot Chocolate that has this line, it started with a kiss, never thought it would come to this. And that is precisely how most of our troubles begin, with a harmless little kiss. We can also be entangled, if we allow the everyday affairs of this life to hem us in. Don't get me wrong. These can be very legitimate pursuits, like family, hobby or career. But they can pull us in so tightly that we cannot free ourselves to fulfill the call of Christ our Commander. You can become entangled, when your possessions or passions possess you. Before we realize, our souls will be subtly seduced away from the path of discipleship. And we find ourselves caught up by the thorns of popular philosophy, or the godless values of society or the passing pleasures of sin. We all at one point in time have become so absorbed with our careers, that nothing else mattered until we have hit that goal or that target. The urgent things of life, such as education, career, paying bills, putting food on the table, keeping a family, can secretly entangle a soldier of Christ, and slowly neutralize their effectiveness in the ongoing spiritual battle with the world, the flesh, and the devil. Thomas Guthrie once said, If you find yourself loving any pleasure better than your prayers, any book better than the Bible, any house better than the house of God. Any table better than the Lord's table. Any person better than Christ. Any indulgence better than the hope of heaven. Then beware, and let the alarm bells ring. A bewildered psalmist once asked. How can a young man keep his way pure? Psalm 199. In an increasingly materialistic, hedonistic, self-absorbed society, 
How can a young man or woman keep his or her way pure? In a society where moral values are ever-changing, how can we stay pure? And the psalmist answers. By guarding it according to your word. Why? Because the word makes us wise. It gives us the wisdom to navigate through life. The entrance of your words gives light, it gives understanding to the simple, Psalm 119-130. A man who spends time meditating in the Word of God, is less likely to be entangled by the affairs of this world. And so the psalmist says, Your word I have hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Psalm 119.11 Solomon gives a good antidote when he advised us. Guard your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. Proverbs 4.23 Again I ask, how are we guard our hearts? By guarding it according to your word. Paul adds that if we want to keep our way pure, we must be alert. Therefore let us not sleep, as others do, but let us watch and be sober, 1 Thessalonians 5.6. Sleeping connotes carelessness. A person who is asleep fails to observe the dangers around him. Jesus said, a man slept and his enemy planted tess amongst his wheat. As Christians, we have been appointed as watchmen over our hearts, our homes, and our communities. If the watchmen sleep, the wolf will devour the sheep. An alert watchman can easily and quickly spot an enemy approaching. Even if the enemy comes as a wolf in sheep clothing, an alert watchman would sound the alarm. The Word of God has the power not only to take impurity out of the heart, but to cleanse the outward life as well. If you wish for a clean outward life, you must wash often by bringing your life in contact with the Word of God. As Christians we are called to meditate on those things that will still be standing, long after the breath of God has swept all other non-eternal things into oblivion. So Paul says in Colossians 3 2-4. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The nearer our hopes are to heaven, the farther the desires of the world will be. The more we seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the less we seek these other things. Calvin said, The mind of a Christian ought not to be filled with thoughts of earthly things or find satisfaction in them. For we ought to be living, as if we might have to leave this world at any moment. Jim Elliot's life verse says, he is no fool who gives up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. The Christian who wants to live a pure life must live it on his knees. Someone has said, prayer will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from prayer. No man has ever walked out of the closet into sin. Hebrews 4.16 encourages us too. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Our motivation for pursuing the unentangled life should be to please God. That should be our ambition. Whether we are at home or absent, to be pleasing to Him, 2 Corinthians 5 9. To Christ, not ourselves and not others, but pleasing to Christ. There is no pleasure in this world that would compare to the satisfaction of hearing these words from the lips of our Lord. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with every good thing to do his will. And may he accomplish in us what is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Hebrews 13 20-21 I leave you with the words of Weigel. Living for Jesus, oh what rest! Pleasing my Saviour, I am blessed. 
only to live for him alone, doing his will till life is done. God bless you.